morning everybody welcome back to my channel I hope you're doing amazing as always and today even though I know it's February I thought I would go over some of the books or all of the books that I read in 2022 I've been really loving these videos on YouTube and I thought this might be a great way to tell you some of my thoughts on the books that I read and maybe give you some new recommendations so yeah with all that in mind let's get started with the video I'm just gonna pull up my Goodreads really quick. Yeah, so at the start of 2022, I was right in the middle of reading Harry Potter. So to start off the year, I started off with Order of the Phoenix, and then Apple Prince, and Deathly Hallows, and I'm just going to keep this really short and sweet. I love Harry Potter. The books bring up so much nostalgia for me. I always really enjoy them. So, I mean, they're always going to be five out of five stars for me. So quick, easy, if you haven't read Harry Potter before, I would give it a try. <laughs> but right after that, I was in the middle of a little house in the prairie phase. I love the TV show. It is one of my all-time favorites. And I watching it, I was like, you know what? I've never read the books. So I start, decided to start by reading the first book, which is Little House in the Big Woods. And, you know, these are children's books, you know, so I expected it to be, like, shorter and you know, a little bit easier to read, and I actually really liked it. I'm somebody who is really interested in sort of that time period in American history of the prairie and how people lived during that time, and so I found this book really interesting. They talk a lot about, you know, what they did for fun. There was a part where Laura was like, you know, I used to play with pig intestines and act like it was a balloon, and then, you know, you learned Ma's routine throughout the day, how she kept up with the house and the cleaning and what she typically did, and there were some really cute stories in there, and I really enjoyed it. I give that one, like, four stars. I thought it was really, really good. I have not read any of the other books so far. I am going to. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And then, okay, after that I got into a little bit of a Twilight phase. <laughs> this happens to me at least, like, once a year where I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna read Twilight again. <laughs> And I fall right back in love with them. I know it's an unpopular popular opinion to be like, oh, I love Twilight, but I really do enjoy the books and the movies. I mean, they're not going to be the most prolific piece of text, but, you know, I find them very entertaining. I, I don't know, I just really enjoy reading them. And if you're wondering, my favorite is Eclipse. I think that one is uh, the most entertaining one, definitely. That's where, like, all the action happens, but... Yeah, I love Twilight. They get four out of five stars for me. And then some of these books I did read for school, so I included those because, you know, I did read them. One of the first ones I did have to read this year was The Epic of Gilgamesh, which I had read before in high school, and I remember I didn't really enjoy it. I, I mean, I thought it was okay. I thought it was good, but I just couldn't connect with it. I thought it was fine. Kind of one of the earlier texts of A Hero's Journey, so a lot of People in high school or middle school will read that as sort of a way to learn the hero's journey. And that's kind of what I had to redo in my class was relearn the hero's journey, so we had to read this. And I actually liked it a lot more than I did in high school. I don't know what changed, because it was the same text, the same story, but I think now I have a better understanding of literature and critical analysis, and so I think I enjoyed it a little bit more kind of looking into the actual text instead of just seeing it as a full-on story. Um, but yeah, I gave this a good four out of four stars. I would read it again. I kind of want to get my own copy, I'm not gonna lie. And then also for my class, I had to read all of the Theban plays. So that's, you know, Oedipus Rex, Antigone, all those really fun stories. And again, I had to read these in high school, and I remember I really loved them in high school, but just didn't think about it until now, or, or I just didn't think about it until I had to reread them for class, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember this, and I have fallen in love. I really enjoyed all three of the plays. They were all very good. I love how they're all connected, and you really just get this sort of tragic storyline, and I loved it so much. Um, I gave it all three five out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I want to get my own copy of the books. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very, very good. <laughs> the next story that I read was A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. I really enjoyed this book. Um, this came out a couple years ago, and it is about a guy named Monty. Back in the 1700s, he is bisexual and goes on this 
Grand European tour with his friend and his sister, and they just get into a bunch of hijinks. He deals with lots of feelings eternally about his friend, but also what his duty is in society and how he wants to deal with that, and also maintaining his reputation. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was very entertaining. It has such a beautiful relationship in there between Monty and his friend. They are very sweet, and I really enjoyed that. And I also thought it was really funny at some parts. There's a part where they go to a party, and then he's naked, and it's a whole um, thing, and they're running around. But it was really good. But I will have to say, one of the things that I most enjoyed about this book that I was not expecting, epilepsy representation in it, um, Monty's friend in the story is epileptic and deals with seizures, and, you know, the story kind of gives you sort of a background and a history to how people with epilepsy were treated back in the day and how they were, like, people thought they were possessed and they had to go to men mental institutions and basically have no life once they were in there. Epilepsy isn't something that you see too often in a book, um, but I really enjoyed that it was in here. As somebody who was epileptic, I could kind of, you know, relate to the character, and I really enjoyed that, and yeah, that was just a little thing that I really enjoyed, so. The next book I read was They Both Die at the End, which went viral on TikTok, I know that, um, but I actually had it in my library for probably about two years before TikTok made it explode, and then I saw it on TikTok and was like, I should probably read this if people like it so much. It's basically about this world where the day you're going to die, you get a call saying in 24 hours you're going to die, and you have like 24 hours to kind of do whatever you want to do. And so these two guys who are all alone in this world decide to meet up and just spend their last 24 hours together, and that's basically it. I really like the relationship that built out of it. I did find it a little slow at parts. I found it just a little kind of boring. They're kind of sitting around doing nothing for a little bit, but, you know, the ending was really, really good. It was very sweet, and yeah, it was very sweet, and I would recommend it. I gave it a solid three stars. I thought it was good. Yeah. <laughs> then I read When the Moon Was Ours, which was so amazingly beautiful. The writing, uh, it was written by, it was written by Anna Marie McLemore? I don't know how you pronounce her name, I'm so sorry. But I remember starting this book and I was like, wow, her writing is just so poetic, so beautiful, and you kind of just feel at peace with her writing. It makes you feel just relaxed talking about the way she describes the outside world or this person's clothing or whatever it is that maybe that she was describing. I thought her writing was just absolutely beautiful. And the story itself was really, really sweet. I don't want to talk about the plot too much, just because I think, you know, I, I don't want any spoilers. I think you should go into this book without really knowing too much about it. But it was a very beautiful story, very, very sweet, and I gave it a solid four stars. It was very, very good. The next book I read was Agatha Christie's Appointment with Death. Now, I haven't read too much Agatha Christie in my life. This is the second book that I've read of hers, and I got it at my used bookstore, and I was like, you know, I want to read more Agatha Christie. Why not? And I started reading it, and I thought it was just, you know, okay. Um, not my favorite story of hers. I still much prefer, you know, um, I've read Murder on the Orient Express, and I really enjoyed that book. I get a little bit bored throughout the book, just a little bit, and I couldn't really connect with the characters as much as I could with Murder on the Orient Express. Um, but I really like this. I did not expect the ending, and yeah, I gave it a good three stars. I think if you're a really big Agatha Christie fan and you kind of just want to read all her stuff, I think this is a good one. Um, just not my favorite. And, you know, I say that as if I've read a whole lot of her stuff. I've only read one other, uh, story of hers, but yeah. <laughs> the next book I read was Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare, that whole series. And I really loved that. That loved that series. I think that was probably my favorite thing that I've read. The favorite new thing that I read this year. I really enjoyed the characters. I thought they were all really fun to get to know. And there's a love triangle in it. It's an unexpected ending. I feel, I've said this before, but I usually feel with love triangles you can kind of know who the main character is going to end up with. And with this one I did not expect the ending, but 
I thought it was really, really good. I've got a girl named Tessa Gray who comes all the way from America to go to live with her brother in England, but on the way she gets kidnapped and saved by the Shadowhunter people, and um, they get take, she gets taken back to her lair and learns secrets about her family and her birth, and she learns more about the Shadowhunters and makes these connections with them, and it's really, really good. I mean, it kept me on my toes the whole way through. I, you know did not expect to like this as much as I did, but I absolutely loved it, so I would give the series a definite look, or a definite read if you haven't already. <laughs> this is coming from somebody who's never read any of the Mortal Instruments series or any other Cassandra Clare work. I think it was very, very good. The next thing I read was That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. I saw this on Darling Desi's YouTube channel, and, you know, I basically watch all her videos and any book that she kind of recommends I kind of instantly add to my Goodreads because I don't know I feel like I can trust her <laughs> but anyways she talked about this book saying it was a really you know comforting cottage quarry sort of book and I was like that sounds really nice and relaxing and I downloaded it and started reading it and instantly there was a lot of sex scenes which you know isn't a bad thing but it's definitely not something that I typically like to read. It just makes me laugh and makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Also, this book kind of did something that I really don't like in, like, period piece books. Not that this is a period piece. This book does something where they bring in modern lingo to the actual story where she's like, I, I don't know if she actually says this, but there have been quite a couple times where she's like, oh my goodness, this is so lit. Yes, hunty. Things like that. Which, again, is not a bad thing. It just kind of takes me out of the universe that I feel like we're in. And, you know, I, this book was fine. I enjoyed the plot. I just didn't care that much about any of the characters or their relationship at all. So I gave it a solid two stars. I don't think I'd read it, read it again. But if you really do, I think it would be a great book if you're into, you know... A nice little comforting cottage quarry beach read and you do like a nice romance novel I think this would be a good one it just wasn't for me. I figure read I had to read for school and it is The Bridegroom by Ha Jen. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing that name correctly I'm just doing the best that I can um, but I really enjoyed this book it's basically just a bunch of short stories um, taking place in like post-cultural revolution China. I found it very interesting and a lot of the stories are very much quite tragic. Um, you know, they talk about how society was and honestly it was, there's some very tragic stories in there. Like I remember the one of my favorites was about a homosexual man who marries this girl and she knows he is um, gay and feels like no one else is going to want to marry her, so she stays married to him. But at the same time, you know, he is in a facility where he is being treated for his homosexuality. And it was a very tragic story and really odd to think, you know, in this day and age, how that stuff was happening not too long ago. So, yeah, I thought it was really, really good if you're looking for just a really good collection of short stories. I would definitely give this one a read. I gave it four stars out of five. The next story that I had to read for class was called Sunny's Blues by James Baldwin. This was just a short story about a black math teacher in the 1950s dealing with his brother's drug addiction. And it was a very, very good story. I really enjoyed the plot. I gave this story three stars just because I couldn't really connect with the writing as much as I wanted to. But I really did enjoy the plot of the story, and I would definitely recommend it for people. Next, I read, again for school, The Cask of Amontillado, which I've read before. I'm a big Edgar Allan Poe fan, and I gave this four stars. It is one of my favorite Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe short stories, and I always recommend it. <laughs> then I read Ballet Shoes, which was one of my favorite books growing up, and also one of my favorite movies growing up. This uh, book was written in the 1930s by Noel Streetfield, I think is how you pronounce her name. Um, basically, it is about these three adopted sisters who go to this performing arts school in order to bring in money for their family. And along the way, they make this pact that they're all going to put their name in the history books. 
And so throughout the book, we kind of just have them discover what they want to do, what their passions are, what they want to do with their life. And, you know, we have Pauline, who is really into acting. She really wants to be an actress when she grows up. And then we have Posey, who dreams of being a ballerina. And then we have Petrova, who is sort of the odd one out. She's the middle sister, and she doesn't really like any of these acting, dancing, singing sort of situations that she's being put in. She really dreams of just, like, working with cars and playing airplanes like Amelia Earhart. And it's just a really, really cute story about family and sisterhood and finding your passion. And I really, really enjoy it. And I gave it five stars because I really love it. Also, if you're interested, there's a really good um, ballet shoes movie starring Emma Watson that's really, really good. So I would highly recommend watching that as well. And I read The Secret Garden because I went to Barnes & Noble and found this really beautiful edition of it. And so I just reread it so I could look at the beautiful book, really. And I give it 5 out of 5 stars. It is one of my favorite books. Frances Hodges Burnett is a fantastic writer. I love her so much. But the next book I read this year was Anatomy, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. And this is one of my favorite books that I read this year. Um, one of my favorite new discoveries. It says it's a love story, but it's mainly about this girl who dreams of being a surgeon. And, you know, she's a girl in the 1700s and she's not able to attend these colleges and classes where she can be able to reach that goal. You know, there's a point in the story where she disguises herself as a boy so she can learn these things and basically decides to practice on her own. And so she meets a guy, a gravedigger, who brings her dead bodies to practice on, and that's sort of the basic plot of it. But I thought it was really, really good. I do really like the love story in here, and... There are some twists and turns, and it was very, very good. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte, which is my favorite Bronte novel. I really love Weathering Heights. It's one of my favorite novels in general, and I love Heathcliff so much as a character. I find him very interesting to read and learn about, um, and I give that 5 stars. I've talked about Weathering Heights a lot on my channel. I highly recommend it to anyone who wants a good, nice, like, paranormal, dark love story. So, yeah. And I read The Picture of Dorian Gray, which I love. I love Oscar Wilde's writing. I love his storytelling within the novel. I really don't like Dorian Gray as a character, but I do really enjoy this book. It's creepy and so interesting to read. I recommend everybody to read it and I gave it a solid 5 out of 5 stars. It was then I read Goodbye to Berlin by Christopher Isherwood, which I was really excited to read because if you're a musical theater nerd like I am, um, you may not know this, but Goodbye to Berlin is the book that inspired the musical Cabaret. And I, being a big, you know, musical theater fan, was really excited to read this. I love Cabaret, I love the story of it, and the music is just amazing. And so I read this book, and I did like it. Um, I just found it a little bit boring at parts. Basically about a man who travels from England to Germany. So the whole book takes place um, right before World War II starts and it's all about sort of how the world around him was changing and all the people that he, meet, that he met on his journey to Berlin and sort of the evolution of his character after meeting these people and all the experiences that he had. I was bored at some parts just because, you know, a lot of it was his inner monologue, which is fine, I do enjoy that, but it was a little bit more than I really wanted and I didn't find it as exciting as I was hoping I would. Um, but I did really like the writing. There are some really beautiful quotes uh, within the text itself that I highlighted. For example, this one's kind of long and also I ha don't know how to pronounce some of these words, so just bear with me. But I thought this was just really poetic, but I caught sight of my face in the mirror of a shop and I am horrified to see that I am smiling. You can't help smiling in such beautiful weather. Trams are going up and down the Klistros, just as usual. They and the people in the pavement and the tea-cozy dome of the Nolan Dorfplatz station have an air of curious familiarity, a striking resemblance to something one remembers as normal and pleasant in the past, like a very good photograph. Like, I have, like, four <laughs> quotes from the novel that I just really enjoyed, and... Yeah, I would read it simply just for the writing itself, but there are some really good storylines in there, definitely. Right, we're almost done, I promise. 
Uh, the next uh, story I read was The Cafe Between Pumpkin and Pie, which again I saw on Darling Desi's YouTube channel and thought, oh, this is just a cute little, you know, Hallmark movie sort of book, which I really enjoy. I do like those. And this definitely was, but again, there was more sex scenes in there than I really thought there would be. But I did actually enjoy it. It was very comfy and cozy. It's basically four or five different love stories that take place in this town, cafe primarily, between streets called Pumpkin and Pie. And yeah, I really did enjoy the stories in here. I thought the writing was very comforting and cozy and very fall inspired if you're looking for that. There was just, you know, more sex scenes than I thought there would be, so I gave it like three stars. Then I read I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, which was very good. I was a huge fan of Jeanette McCurdy back in, you know, the iCarly days as, as a kid. And, you know, to read her point of view of her experience on the show before and after, you know, the show and everything, it, it's really sad. Oh my goodness. And, you know, I think it's so brave of her to write about her experiences because she went through a lot. And, you know, her writing in itself is just beautiful and eloquent. And I really think everybody should give this a read if even if you've never seen iCarly in your life, I think this is a really, really great book. And I read The Tempest by William Shakespeare. I told my, made a pact with myself that I was going to read a Shakespeare play each month until I read all of them. So that's what I'm doing. And I started with The Tempest and it was really, really good. I really love Shakespeare plays. I have read The Tempest before and it was very, very good. Very, very funny. And it has this sort of like whimsical magical quality to it that I really enjoyed. So I gave it four stars. I would recommend it. Then I reread Little Women <laughs> again. I usually do that during December, like November, December when it's starting to get cold and wintry and Christmassy. Um, and you know that's a five out of five star book for me. I highly recommend it and also recommend any of the movies. I love the 2017 version. My personal favorite though is the one from 1949 with Elizabeth Taylor and Janet Lee and Margaret O'Brien. So the next book I read uh, during Christmas time was Christmas with O. Henry, which is just a very short book with like two of his Christmas short stories in it. You know, it was like Gift of the Magi and it was really, really good. It was really, really good. The second one in there, I forget what it was. I think it's, yeah, Whistling Dick's Christmas Stocking. I didn't enjoy that one as much. It was, it was okay. I liked it. Um, but I much prefer Gift of the Magi over Whistling Dick's Christmas Stocking. Then of course during Christmas time, I, like the week of Christmas, the five days leading up to Christmas, I read A Christmas Carol, um, and that is always a five out of star, five star book for me, it is. And then we're at our final book. The last book I read this year was one that I got for Christmas, which was The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady by Edith Holden. Now this is a book that was written, I think, in like the 1900s, obviously during the Edwardian period. It's basically this girl's little private journal of her daily life in the countryside in England, all the birds and the plants that she sees, and kind of what the weather is like. And it's just really, really pretty. There's beautiful pictures in it. Oh my goodness. I, I would get yourself a copy just for the pictures in it. They're all like watercolored and beautiful and elegant and I think yeah, really interesting. But yeah, that was the last book I read. I'll say that in 2022, I didn't read as much as I wanted to read. I usually read a lot more than this, but last year I was just really busy. And so in total, I read 40 books. I still think that's a good number, and I don't think we should be pressuring ourselves to read a certain number of books. Just kind of read when you want to and whatever you would like. But yeah, anyways, that is what I read last year. And... Please comment down below what you read last year, what your favorites were to read last year. I would love to see it and add more books to my Goodreads. Yeah, I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful and amazing day. Bye!